Hey, look, menu bomb. It's in a shoe shine shop. Where she where she shines, she sits, and where she sits, she shines. Come on. Susie works in a shoe shine shop. Where she shines, she sits. She <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> he happen. got done. <laughs> he got done. <laughs> and on that note, Kitty oh. and I are out of here. Good luck keeping your job after <laughs> that one, man. <laughs> it's my first broadcast, man. <laughs> That was the one. That was the one I wanted to see again. Thank you, Menu Log, for the Menu Pog moment. You love to relive him. Uh, and look, we love to relive a couple of spicy games as well. Mammoth and Kanga is now on the card. Boys, tell me, uh, who's going to win this one? Of course, Skimmy. I need you to tell me why we have Mammoth winning it. Well, well, Mammoth win this one. Uh, I feel like it's going to be either Refury or Tron the Palm that gives us the juice this game. I feel like we've always looked to Refury because he keeps giving us these crazy champions. They give us a very different look last week. I'd like them to revert back to what they were doing beforehand. Seemed like a case of protect the voice show, um, an experiment that uh, I, I suppose is good in principle in this meta, but uh, yeah. for these players from what we've seen, I'd much rather them stick to what's working before. Well, what's working is Kanga. Uh, they've got a new mid laner, and for some reason, that's got a couple of dubs on the board. They're playing pretty damn good at the moment. And Rusty, tell me why they're going to win today. Yeah, they've been really improving lately. I think Fido just having that killer instinct, right, as a mid laner looking to take the one-on-ones, looking to be proactive, it has made a world of difference for only who's able to play around that as a fairly reliable win condition. Uh, Limas and Leonel is still the place that we always take our attention towards for the side of Kanga. If they're doing well, then I think your stage is set for a good Kanga game. Yeah. But they're also the point of highest variance where we haven't seen the best from them for most of the split. Now, I've really liked what Leonel's been able to do for the last uh, week. Last week, he really uh, picked it up. You know, good couple of wards everywhere and a great couple of games as well, really. Uh, having a lot more agency across the damn rip. But look, it's not all about that. Um, apparently, we've got Styled coming in as the new ADC. Is that going on? Wait, is that confirmed? Or have I, did I miss that? I swear it was Lima. Uh, yeah, we had Lima show Lemus up. Lima was there. Anyway. That's what was submitted, so. He's submitted. Oh, it's Lima today. Okay, no worries. So, uh, head to head, we got Fido and Reef Fury. Looking at these mid laners, we need to talk about this one because Fido, look, he wasn't here last time when Reef Fury had uh, been popping off. So, look, man, what's Reef Fury got to do? Because I heard just before that he's actually got some, some conditions at hand outside his house right now, Skimmy. Yeah, look, um, the world is collapsing as it stands right now, so we can all rejoice and have a, a little bit of solace in watching the LCO. Um, so hopefully his internet stays stable for the meantime, uh, because when he himself looks stable in game, uh, you know, the, the game feels so, so comfortable for them. Um, I think comparing the jungles and the mids in this game is going to be an interesting talking point. I feel like Mayfine in recent weeks has had some of the best performances to date so far. Uh, and he's going to need that going into somebody like Only, whose KDA is very impressive. He's been a big, big part of what's got Kanga across the board in a lot of their games. And yes, whilst they've suffered a whole host of defeats, yeah. uh, him in particular has uh, always looked really strong. So uh, this emerging partnership with him and Fido is one that I'm watching with great intent. Now, Rusty, talk to me. What's, what's this first blood dissipation going on and what's it mean? I mean, basically, it means that Mayfan's super active for the side of Mammoth with their first bloods. It could just be that the rest of the team works around him with the early laning phase, right? He's always dictating the pace, the flow, where I feel like for the side of only, he's not necessarily dictating the flow of the game. He is more of a, a fluid, reactive jungler. Yeah. But he doesn't get punished nearly as often as Mayfan does, right? Only with a or double KDA. Is, is a clear indicator of that, but we can also say from the games we've watched, only is usually running around making consistently good plays, but not outstanding or aggressive, proactive type of plays where I feel like that's needed from FIFA. Okay, so you feel like as well that we might want to see Kanga doing a little bit more proactivity. Either way, that's something we can talk about in a little bit because we have Kitty ready down on the sidelines to have a chat with one of the players. Hello guys, another proactive player is Re Fury, so let's bring him in onto the desk for the interview. Hello no. Re Fury, so I know you are currently, you know, in Brisbane and the situation's tough, but something else that left the fans quite puzzled was the Seraphine pick in the mid lane against Dials. Being the mechanical player of Mammoth, give us some insight on why draft ended up like that. Um uh, we kind of picked the Seraphine because uh, Seraphine was uh, a counter to like Ari. We thought because uh, Ari is like the strongest champion in mid lane right now. She's very like her, her trading and lane is disgusting with the new W 
uh, movement speed. Uh, she's super strong. She gets prio. She like fights. It's like crazy new champion since the rework. And we thought Seraphine could like match the push and kind of like stops getting picked with the, like the, the good old the A ram um, shield everyone and everyone survives. And like looking at last game, looking at Gravitos, hey look, A ramming looks like a win con right now. Well, hopefully we do see Seraphine being picked once again in another game soon to come. But let's talk about the match tonight. So you guys are going against Kenga. And since the roster swap with Fighter actually coming in onto the roster, Kenga have been playing a lot better, especially in their early game. Which player are you specifically looking out for heading into tonight's match and why? Um, it, it would just definitely be Fido. Uh, first of all, in solo queue, uh, I've seen the guy a lot. He's, he's pretty, like he's got a solid champel and he just sticks to what he knows and he's really good at that. Uh, the thing I, I see is like Chungi used to be, Chungi is like one of the best Aries and now they don't have Chungi and Ari is meta right now. So it's um, hopefully uh, Fido hasn't picked Ari up in the meantime, uh, but we'll see. Hopefully we do see you picking the Ari since it's so broken. Well, best of luck Refier and hopefully everything in Brisbane is, you know, going swiftly and best of luck again. Yeah. <laughs> Not swimming by the end of tonight, hopefully. Hopefully no, no swimming. No swimming allowed, guys. But what? What about all the swimmers out there? Oh. No swimming in floodwaters. Back. Safety first. Didn't you say there were like crocodiles in the water? There is definitely an escaped crocodile. Anyway, <laughs> that's what was on the game. You've broken Mac now, honestly. <laughs> Crocs? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. It might, it might. Anyway, uh, look. On to a, onto a more fun subject, Def Envo, you guys have Twitch channel points. You guys can use them to vote on which team you want to get the dub. Uh, make sure you do the prediction in Twitch chat and you can take part in the Def Envo. So look, I've heard enough about your prediction. I want to hear about our predictions. I want to see where this one's going because today I'm one from two and that's a pretty good strike rate so far. So look, me and Rusty on the same bandwagon. Skimmy and Kitty going for Kanga. All right, Kitty, you're the big brains here. You've got the most dubs. Tell me. Why Kanga are going to win? I actually had a really tough time choosing between the two teams. I think they're quite even in terms of skill. I think Mammoth really depend on how their draft turns out. If Reef Fury isn't on one of those hyper carry champions, or even just a carry champion in general, I think Mammoth's going to struggle quite a lot. And with Bido joining in um, into the Kanga, I just think Kanga's a better team looking into this. I'm, I'm having, I'm struggling with my word. I'm getting, my brain's flooding. But um, yeah, I think Kanga's going to be the better team coming to tonight. <laughs> okay, now Skimmy, uh, did you catch any of that? And do you want to add anything? Uh, I caught a little bit of it. And uh, I suppose my, my add-ons to that would be, uh, they've both beaten Gravitas. They've both lost to Dire Walls. But Kanga looked really, really good into Chiefs. So I think ease of execution, the experience is starting to ramp up. Even if it is... Six weeks in, um, I would give it to them on that one. I'm a big fan of what Fido's brought so far with his aggression and his, his champion ball. So, yeah. I want to see more. Now, I want to know how they're going to deal with Mammoth's Chaos, because that's what I'm relying on. And Rusty, I'm sure you're with me. They've got that chemistry. They may not play, you know, 100% beautiful, straight legal League of Legends, but they make it happen, don't they? They, they do make it happen, mate. I, I do think that Mammoth are... The team, I feel like Mammoth, if they draft correctly, like Kitty said, they are the team to beat in this 1v1, right? I do think yeah. the Kanga are the ones that have shown that they're improving, but they're not nearly there yet. So it's hard. This was the hardest to predict on the day by far, and we still got the second game wrong. So it's yeah. really hard to know what's going to happen in this one. Yeah, look, it's just very, very close. Uh, now, I am getting word, a good word. Word is champ was followed by a second word that says select. Ah, so it's ready. Let's go. <laughs> okay, well, that's the easiest transition you've ever thrown us to uh, before. Yes, let's get into champ select. Let's see what happens this time. This would be interesting, right? If Kanga can get this win, that would make it one for one with Mammoth. Uh, and then we have a whole host of these interesting interactions going into the third round, Robin, where teams are one for one, and that last game means everything. So we're going to kick this one off with two target bands as well. Skimmy away from Mammoth. Vagar and Zillion are going to be immediately taken off the board. Every AD carry to ever exist is available this game. Sure. That's what we're seeing. And I am very curious to see where their priorities lie. The last game we saw an Ezreal, uh, but Jinx is still, I think, probably just the best. Uh, we know, however, that Voice is a very good Zeri player. So it could be that you have to pick that one if it's up. Don't even give him a shot. 
Remember the Zeri has been heavily nerfed on patch 12.4. This is the first time we'll be seeing it. We're going to have to highlight the builds that Lemas chooses to go towards. But it's just going to be the Trinity Force once again. Nevertheless, on the other side, Skimmy, power pick. Yeah, uh, already interesting to note is all three picks. Uh, these will be their first times being played by those particular players as well. So, uh, new look for the Zeri. Uh, a chance for Lemus to show what he can do in a champion that looks to be so devastatingly strong when given a chance to try and execute in that fashion. But now, uh, other mid laners looking to show up what they can do with this rise. Vex to question what would Fido go for? Nice and early on, he says, well, Vex is the solution before you pinch that champion pool too much more. Yeah, and it's not like the Rise is an unplayable matchup, though. You know, like, usually you'd see the Vex into something that has mobility. Vex existing tends to push LeBlanc out just a little bit, right? Which is one of the reasons we haven't seen too much of LeBlanc. But Vex Volley Bear, to me, just speaks towards a strategy from Kanga. So I don't think they looked at the Rise and thought, this is the pick. I think they acknowledged, because even last week, with Hecarim available, they chose the Volley Bear. So they know what they're doing. They are going to be diving, presumably bot lane, constantly, maybe top lane. It's all about that mid-jungle priority, however, and how they're able to move around the map. Where Mammoth, I think so far, it is a predictable but very good composition. They're predictable in what they're going to offer, but those first three picks can certainly deviate in uh, a whole host of different directions. But you know what they're about. It's going to be damage, it's going to be rotations, and you need to be in your A game if you can go right now. Uh, respecting timings on the map and where you could be at any given state. Now we've got to open up this second phase of bands with a Nautilus Denial. Begs the question now, yeah. uh, what will Lionel go for? Because we have been praising his, uh, what was it? It was Nautilus, Leona, Leona and Time Kench last week, but whether or not we're going to get that as a pairing with Azeri is another question entirely. Yeah, and just looking at what bands are going to come through from Kanga as well, Skimmy, because there's still so many ADCs up. Normally at this point, if an ADC gets banned, you pinch the entire pool, right? So Mammoth would have had to pick it in the first three. Aphilios, you ban maybe the Caitlyn if you wanted as well, right? But you've got sure. the Jinx still there. So I'd say Aphilios Jinx make the most sense. The Karma Caitlyn can still be very powerful. It's just that perhaps it's more killable, is what your composition is currently excelling at. And the Yumi ban instead of the Leona. Lots of interesting decisions have to be made in the 4-5 ban phase for both respective teams. Mammoth yeah. could lock in the Caitlyn, they could lock in the Ezreal. They are going to choose for the standard expected pick here. So now you got a very strong poking bot lane, and Kanga have already revealed that they have options to look to try and dive you. But how can they give the Zeri as much agency to try and weather the storm before only pops his head into that part of the map? Because Zeri is... Uh, typically quite weak in these early phases, at least until the Sheen item is gone and through. There is the Leona, so a little bit of aggression to try and really punish the fact that if there's one wrong move, one extra trade that Mammoth find, uh, they might just pay the ultimate price for it. I feel like you just like Leona and then Graves or something, right? Your composition is just good. Sure. Just looking forward to this last pick here from Kanga to round out their composition. We spoke cool. about Leona in the 4-5 band, Skibby. We expected that to be picked. Graves, again, makes sense. It's a blind pick top lane. I low-key would just like a Nah from Drop. I, like, actually, I don't know how this matchup 1v1 goes. I feel like Graves handles it really well, but the comp from Mammoth would just be lit with it. <laughs> He's called every pick. Well, that's why you're the analyst, uh, Colorcaster Extraordinaire, the one that knows it all, because uh, we have read this one as cleanly as could be. We take those, man. We take Dude, those. I, I, it does feel kind of nice, right, when ah, you make a suggestion and it happens. Yeah, <laughs> especially when you just see it come up, because you don't have to click anything as a commentator, right? You're just sitting here watching. But the thing that I will say for Mammoth, why I like the Nar pick, is it rounds out their team fight really nicely. You know, it, it kind of provides them with teleport flank angles for objectives, so front to back team fighting is still possible with a Hecker and with a Rise. Hecarim and Ryze being able to roam together as well towards the Karma Caitlyn side lane breaks open the map. And if you have an open map state where you can protect the Gnar, it's just heaven, right? The amount of access that he starts getting with vision control would be insane. But I do think this game is decided bot lane probably in the first 10 minutes just because you've got a Volley Bear, Vex and a Leona looking to dive constantly. Yep. Unless Kanga take the peace approach to this game and they say bot isn't real, we're just diving top lane off cooldown now that you've picked the NAS. 
That's a very interesting discussion, right, as to where those resources will go to, because we've seen what the Caitlyn can achieve, especially with these poking and chinas, be it the Karma Lux or whatever it might be. We know what their goal is. Bully, zone, plates, gold, turrets, map pressure, the world is your oyster, right? Opens up the floodgates of things like Rise, Necrom, and Nada, find those angles to flank, to set up those fights, to break apart Kanga's assault, but... <laughs> I mean, we've seen so many different variations of this Graves from Lived. We've seen him go the route of, you know, uh, TP, sometimes even Exhaust, Ignite, Shield Bow, whatever it might be. I'm very curious to see what the variation will be this time. And as you quite rightly pointed out, where will Jungle go? Doesn't it feel like to you that Mammoth have just picked the meta mid-jungle versions of, of Kanga? True, like, yeah. Hecarim Rise is just your standard meta variant of Volibear Vex, but... It's also specific to Kanga. They love these champions. They will pick these champions. And so there's definitely a lot of questions that have to be brought up about mid priority. I am unfamiliar with the matchup too much detail, but I would suspect that a level two rise does get priority over Vex and opens the floor just a little bit more for May Fun for the first scuttles. And then as levels go into Vex's pocket, as cooldown starts to really come across on the queue, it's a lot easier to match that priority. And that's where it gets a bit harder to push ahead on the play with any kind of tempo if you're the right. It is an interesting comparison, right, to compare both mid jungles as essentially fulfilling the same role. They've both got mobility, they've both got diving threats. For me, feeling like who's going to get the better map timings, the better map read with the item, you know, item advantages to uh, find that moment to punish, to excel, and to find themselves that lead, which could give them an all-important victory. Here we go, though. Loading into the rift for that third game of the night. Will we have any more upsets? Because this game is a big one. And we need to figure out what the angle is looking like as we welcome back Coach Ash from the side of Mammoth. Hey guys, how are you? We're doing well, we're doing well. Look, I was saying before, prefacing this one as a very big game. Uh, obviously, a lot of ties at the moment. Big emphasis on what that third round robin's going to look like. But you and Kanga are neck and neck right now. So, uh, what have you made of their new look ever since Fighters joined? Um, I think he's a fine addition to the team. Um, he seems to have done that job of like being that strong voice that they kind of need. Um, they, they seem... Sorry, in, in the first few weeks, they seem to lack a lot of initiative, right? And Fido has certainly helped with that. It, at, at the very least, it looks like he's hot. Um, yeah. But I don't think initiative is the only problem that this roster has had. Uh, and obviously, you can also make the argument that maybe he's adding more problems to the roster. For example, right now, he's a lot more critical in terms of Yes, interesting talking point because I want to, you know, extend that a little bit further and talk about champs. That we saw a big, big emphasis on denying the supports uh, more so than anything. Was there a clear direction that, you know, doesn't really matter what AD carry gets locked in this game? Um, we had our eyes on Caitlyn for sure. Uh, voice was kind of <laughs> second guessing a little bit in champ select, but we know he loves this champion. We know he's good at it. Um, ideally, that was the champion we wanted, and we kind of put the support bands out there to make sure that. The common priority remains with the game. Yeah, Sam. Well, good luck, Hush. We're going to jump into this one. Wish you boys the best of luck for this final Super Week and uh, hope it works well. Yeah, thank you guys. Take care. <laughs> Give me the curse. Finally it comes did. true. Yeah, yes. we, we lose the first blood because we're in an interview. It happens. It doesn't happen very often anymore, but it does still happen. It was quite simply. Oh, all right. He's good. He's good. Observer's got me freaking out here real quick, but he had the spite. There was that fast pad over. And Mayfan dies level one because he's running Ghost and he gets hit by the Vex Fear, right? The passive that comes out. Terrify him, only flashes in, they lock it down. That was flash used from everybody on the top side of Kanga for the Ghost. But 400 gold, first blood, you do take that trade. This means that things like this do happen. Remember the Fear passive is there. Primed and ready to go. What, what spells is he going to use it with? He's going to use it on his E. And has that put him enough time? He's saying, only please back me up. The thunder comes down. There Liv. is the shield. But look at lived on a wide flank. Level three, he's just crashed his wave. He says, I'm roaming. We're going to make that Tapoon play. It's not just him that can do it. I can too. There's a smoke screen. And you've gone from staring at a gray screen to another one again.
Uh, it's just a comedy of errors, really, across the board there. Looking for a gank in mid lane, no ghost, just loses out on the E duration. Fighter walks up towards his jungler only, starts to work his way down, and then it's just a case of my Q's on cooldown, waiting for the next one. What is the real difference in that play? Just like level one, it is that Livd is involved in the mix. It's the second time now you've seen this Graves get active, move around. The wave being crashed in top lane will hurt. That's a pretty sizable amount of minions that it feels like he is missing up there. Just based off the minimap, but he'll at least get there for experience in the range creeps. Again, I am just casting off the minimap in that, but that's still so big, right? Because he might sacrifice a bit for himself, but he wins the rest of the map. And given how much of an emphasis uh, you put on this mid-jungle pairing on either side, look to try and really get ahead and determine how this uh, early game works out. The fact that those kills and those deaths are found in that exact place is, is massive. The jungle CS as well is so large right now in a point of difference. It's not just the first kill that goes the way of only. It's the fact that he's now 101 with 13 odd jungle CS in difference. He's going to be level 6 so fast. And this Hecarim, a champion that you, you would probably say wants to full clear level 4, maybe get some boots and look for a gank then. Gets cheeky with it, tries to go for a level 3 play, and I think it's the punish from Kanga. But you're not messing around. Well worth highlighting. Now we get to spectate how this mid lane matchup works in the meantime, because I would not be surprised if Mayfarn looks to try and bridge that deficit by repeat ganks, especially when the lane states are like this. You're going to navigate that one quite nicely. Has to deal with this minion wave instead. The bottom place we haven't heard too much from so far in this game, pretty quiet overall, uh, is actually basically even, right? This wave will crash, but it's Kanga that have first move. May fun, no flash, remember? Oh, no. Talk about punishment! Oh, oh the Zenith Blade was so close to touching. Frustration, no doubt, for Lionel. Can Mammoth now answer back, because his positioning has been compromised. Collapsed upon from every point on this map. He's going to flash into the blue buff pit, and... Oh, he's going to get caught by the trap! Oh, frustration after frustration. He nearly got out. It was close, but it was a great trap from Voice, right? Stops auto-attacking, actually continues to path in a straight line to get some extra movement there so that he can place the trap down, secure it. Which means that the extra spells are able to be cycled through by Mammoth, and they'll get themselves a kill on the board. I mean, that is... It's devastating because you can see the play, right? It's, it's perfect on paper. You've got priority bottom. Your jungler has first move. It's, again, no flash on the Hecarim. You have the perfect flank angle. And the pincer just goes slightly awry because Lionel doesn't have... Well, you know what? He had flash. So he could have just doubled down. They could have flashed him for the play, made it happen. But yeah. trying to hold that flash, ultimately, is he, he's undoing. True Fury done him by the wave, by the way. Shadow Surge doesn't connect, but this will... Catch these hands, says only. Life doesn't get easier in the mid lane, nor does it get easier topside as Liv wins there as well. We are getting a collapse across the map. Kanga winning in every lane that there is to offer. And it feels like these teams at the bottom of the ladder really showing up big time right now. Voice puts in a nice trade just on the disengage there, but definitely was due for a base. No shot, he's got 54 CS a kill and only has two long swords. That's the type of fight that probably shouldn't be happening. If you are Mammoth top lane, we didn't really get to see how that 1v1 happened, but in general, if it's a mini now, you'd expect the Graves is winning. And level 6 just pushes past the minions. Jump just misses. So no shot he's going to survive that one. Well played by Lived overall, but Tron uh, just does not use the hop correctly. Mid gets ganked. It's going from bad to worse. It really feels like they've uh, mitigated those... Potential source spots, what a Caitlyn and a Karma could offer in the bot lane. You're winning them out, right? 2v2. If you're finding success elsewhere, and the early investment, what that's meant to achieve is feeling a fraction doom. Feels always horrible to say it eight minutes in, but that is a lane where you want to be dominating, where you want to be pushing, rotating, re establishing setup to go for this herd, which is now just spawned. Yeah, they really are just losing, right? Like if. Mid has no priority on this rise. Nah definitely has no priority against the completed Hullbreaker. And bot lane just saw them lose a 2v2 as the Caitlyn Karma. When it gets angles, it's very difficult to deal with it.
And if that's the case, you just steadily start losing the map, right? You, you have a look at the Drake, you get pushed away only, taking the Herald at the same time. Top priority is free. You could actually break the top turret with this, potentially. The game just explodes. Actually, you just dive top. Surely, right? Because you got there's, the hole break it. The punishment is unreal. If it there's happens. no way Tron stays. Like, he, he doesn't even know where the Volibear Bear is, and you have to assume you're being dove. Look at him. Like, he's terrified, and he should be. King spot side, Lima sits the angle, and he can dash across the wall. I've seen those plays happen, something that I've never wanted to do again with Smart Cast turned on and um, dash into a wall, but he's got it. And they're going to walk away here. Reef Fury is going to at least clear the wave. Trying to hit the high, just barely scraped that one. But top is getting plates again from the Volibear just being topside jungle. Like, it, this is nightmare fuel for Tron. He's gonna come back up top close to transforming. <laughs> Only just wanted an assist. Better luck next time, huh? All you'll see is the cinematic experience. It's a Michael Bay movie. Well, Tron did transform into a grey screen, didn't he? Easy first turret. Same thing mid as well, you'd expect it's a matter of time now that Liv is unleashed onto the red side quadrant of the map. And this was a comp that we said is very good at diving bottom. Haven't needed it yet. Just that scary love. They're winning outright like this. A Hecarim walks into a jungle. That's the joke. Falls on down. Lemus now going for this one in the 2v2. Gonna get hit by the trap. Hit the summoner heal and force out voice to run away with this one. He's gonna find an angle that they so desperately needed. Punish the Zeri and now they catch this one. Huge shutdown now, 3 0. I mean, that was great from Kanga to find the initial first pick and then Limas just starts seeing red. His moment presents itself. He wants to make the play, he wants to go for it, but now they're dealing with a 3 0 Caitlyn. So they have kind of opened the door needlessly to a win condition for the side of Mammoth, but if the dive composition of Kanga was scary in draft, now wait all of the kills and how far ahead they are to that mix. So Mayfan is almost invisible in comparison to only at present. And if Lived is on your side of the map, you are losing on that side of the map. I'd love them just to keep the lane setups as they are right now, just allow Liv to continue uh, finding success and bullying his way towards that uh, top lane tier two. Nah, Why straight up, man. You, you just five man voice. I feel like you want to actually open the map up as much as possible. I'm good with Lived being top and winning the 1v1, but you have to bring the Vex and the Volley down here and threaten. Like, the Hecarim doesn't exist in comparison, right? Genuinely, I think this has just been a bit of a jungle gap. Strategic from the whole team of Kanga. Like, it's not only as better than Mayfun 1v1, but like, Kanga have jungle gap. Camping his bot lane. He wants revenge. He wants answers. And he might not find them. Because this Karma is dead before he can even giddy up and will walk on into the lane. The Karma shield is there. The heal is enough. The Mantra Evolution may have been good enough. Only forced to flash away. In comes the Realm Warp. And where are you going? Rotations working in their favor. And Vex was just lagging behind. Vex is on vision right now. If she goes for the ultimate, they'll see it. Shadow Surge! Three man fear, but can they answer that? Can they find kills? Lemus is hunting, he's got the lightning crash, he's got a lot of movement speed right now. He's gonna walk into a trap, has to be careful. Oh, terrified for a second. Only oh, soaks that up Jeez. something chronic. That was close. That was insanely close from Kanga losing multiple members, to be perfectly honest. The Caitlyn's huge. They navigate the fight so well, right? Mayfun just becomes another support for voice. This is what we say Kanga have given them a win condition. Now you're starting to see that realized. Vito doesn't come down with only first. It's the first move from Refury. Rise pick obviously comes in clutch in its own unique ways. Lemas really trying to fight here. He's got the Leona. I think they will just be able to back away perfectly fine this time. And what kicks that all off, Skimmy, was a sick bait from Rocco, to be honest. Yeah, ultimately, quite deceptive in how tanky he was. Power W. Soaked up the world and more, and just enough time for Mayfun to poke his head in. But the Realm Wolf, for me, at the real MVP, just able to clean up and completely defuse any opportunity for, for Kanga to answer back with at least one. <laughs> the gold from Liv. 
is so absurdly in his favor. He's 1,300 ahead of the, the next person on the map, which is the 3 0 Caitlyn. But Just this is why Tron, we put so really much emphasis on him, right? This is why we've always said yeah. Lived is that go to player, but teams have cracked the code. They were ganking him, they were targeting him. There's a reason he farmed up so many MVP mentions on his time with the Chiefs last year. He came into this one, high expectations, played at Worlds. He's coming to this game, and if left on an island, he will deliver. One hundred percent. Always has that potential. It's just nice to see it happen sometimes. Just in case you ever forgot. This is where that map state does get a little bit tricky, right? Like we know that top's not real. A hole breaker from Nar exists now, which will be nice. It'll keep him alive, hopefully. Right, if you're Mammoth. But Grave still has outright control. 30 CS lead, but it's the plates, it's the extra money in his pockets that'll start to add up. And that means constant roam towards mid. Mid's actually probably the least safe place for voice. As safe as that lane actually is, right? You've got a Karma protecting you. It's the shortest lane. It's really hard for them to set things up. But if you have a Vex and a Volley Bear on one side and a Graves on the other, it's doomed for you sitting mid. That outer turret is terrifying. Team Varithiri taking zero chances on that one. Sees Vision being denied, says, I'm out of here. Gonna take the long way all the way back to that lane, unless he decides to poke his head into mid lane where things are getting spicy. In comes the Volley Bear, and your stun just claims into a solid flare, and the Zenith Blade afterwards, massive from Lionel. A double kill for that Fed Graze, which just does not miss. Yeah, and that wasn't even at the turret, right? That's just pushed out a tiny bit, and that's all it takes. You know it's scary, you're expecting it to happen, and even if you expect it to happen, does it mean that you can stop it? The answer is obviously no in this case, Kanga. They'll hit the team fight combo, they'll break the outer turret in mid lane. We'll get to see this one more time. Voice pushes way too far forwards. Gets hit by the Zeri W slow. Gale forces, nets, cleanses just a little bit too early. But it's the fact that Lived is here, it's the fact that Only is here. That wasn't really a play, that wasn't the timing for that play. What a weird set of circumstances. The one place you were looking for. Now ultimately has gone against him. Fido landing everything, trading out Everfrost. He does not connect to retaliation though. Fido going for the all-in. He's hit the Shadow Search, he just needs one kill. He just needs a trickle more damage. He can't find it. He's grinning in the camera, but he's no doubt upset with the result. That's what happens when you sit in a bush and you try and cheese, right? You spend time waiting. They get to push the wave before you even make the play. You end up dying. And so they have everything they could possibly want from that one. Free Fury just walks away. Flash is about to be ready. It's just a missed timing, right? That's just what it comes down to. The combo was good, damage just not enough. Rise, who tanky man? I've seen before, we even considering the itemization that comes at this game, right? I've really been enjoying though this uh, tank blue rise build. It feels uh, well, just like anything, these late game mages ever so frustrating to deal with where they take zero damage but they put out far too much. Yeah, it does more damage than the tanks that should be fighting against the. Not enough to, you know, like a, a full AP rise would one hit a carry, you're not going to be doing that, but they can't one hit you, and such is the joy of tanky items in this video game. It does seem like it is going to be the Fimble Winter for the rise this time around. Also, the, the variance of first items, right? Straight into the Everfrost, able to apply even more crowd control, sets up free rise combos, and he's a fast boy. Not as fast as this uh, Hecarim, who's forced to ult match. Disengage away, zoned out of the river. Not so much as Tron the Pom is, who's down two levels right now, but hit Mega, so we can shove him into the water. Stun doesn't connect, I do not believe, but in a 1v3, what can the Graves do? He's got the hole breaker, he's got a shield bow, he's breaking ankles, he's taking names. Shield bow is there, the sustain may just be enough to trade his life and allow the rest of his team to find success elsewhere. Yeah, that's a one-for-one one against three people. You're absolutely stoked with that if you're Kanga. They summon the Herald mid, they'll break the mid lane in a turret. Look at them moving towards bottom now as well. Fido has reinforcements from only Enderly and L. The ultimate can fly out and the turret can be cancelled. 
with the volley barrel. This is the best case scenario on the side of Kanga. They will stop the Herald charge. Only just altered the wall. Oh, look away. <laughs> just as well oh, we weren't no. there at that point in the game. We pan to the aftermath of it all. Mayfun rocks up to the slate. He has no ultimate, but it does not matter. Oh, oh no. Everything was going so right, Skimmy. That's just one little mistake. They saw it as well. I think there was a question mark ping, and then they just run him down. Also, surely Tron didn't need to die in that top play either. Surely he's just peeling away and letting the rest of the yeah. team sub in like a wrestler, no? I don't know if the flash was available or not, but if he had flash, like there's no shot he dies there. Tag team, sub me out. You pick up the kill. I'll just get the assist. Frustration from any face, perhaps, wanting to run him down and get that uh, shot down goals. Ultimately, not to be the case, though. Viv still obviously commanding this one. For me, that looks like a Bloodthirster next. If you thought he was an immovable object before, wait till he completes that one. You are not touching him. But you still so 6-1 Caitlyn, Skimmy. Yeah. It's a really good time to check in with that uh, overall gold. Graves versus Caitlyn. That's Who it. can carry harder? Pretty hard to be a Caitlyn in this draft. I know it was mentioned lightly by uh, Ash, the coach of Mammoth, but I can imagine if the team says, I think Caitlyn is good here, you look at the enemy composition, you think to yourself, no, no, it's not. But it is a good champion, so it would be rude not to pick it, given that <laughs> it's actually quite terrible here. Everything one hits me. hoping though that you can find moments to punish like they have so far this game six and one one small blunder in the mid lane otherwise though this ace in a hole is acting like a vacuum clean it's just hoovering up all the kills all the missed opportunities that can go through against them just looking towards his next steps it does feel like baron's the obvious place to go towards. Now you've got four minutes till the next Drake. And it's a pretty meaningless Drake at present, just because there is no soul threatened just yet. If we're looking at Baron, both teams actually have a relatively fast Baron take. Okay. As it stands, Kangaroo are the first ones to really deploy with Baron in mind, having the Brave set up intentionally towards the side lane bottom, where you'd expect Tron the Pong to go match him. This is where the Rise can be a little bit faster to the play, a bit more on the map. Also, almost has his Gimbal Winter done. Nice tanky spike. Be a very good spike. We're waiting for a fight to potentially break up. Whilst we are talking about minimization, looks like nothing's changed for Zeri. Still going for the on hit and looking to do some on hit damage. Forcing a flash away from Karma, caught in the mid wave working against them, but by having that mid-tier 2, Kanga can do things like this. Quickly flip the script and turn their attention topside and said on towards this rise. We're so, so tanky! He's still alive. He is still alive. And I wouldn't be surprised if he looks to try and come back into this one. No need, though. The fight has fizzled out. And they're taking down Fito again in the process. I mean, Refury freaks out, tries to ult to safety, but if he stands and delivers, gets the Fimble Winter Shield as well as his own. I mean, he, he lives. He's going to survive through that one. The dive attempt falls awry. And now you'll find Lived poised in mid. So any kind of strategy that exists from Kanga for, for a macro sense is just going to be a wash now. It's going to be pushed in dealing with the push of Mammoth. And Rise is the one with Teleport ready, able to set up in a side lane. I note, however, that Tron the Pom did teleport, so that is one of them missing. What a champion rises, hey? What a champion. Any, any examples to say, why would I ever want to go tank rise? Well, there it is. It looked like he was caught. It looked like Tempo was against them. There was no way he should have survived, but they've always taken down Phyto in this process to make it happen. Would really love to see that Zonia's come out at this rate. <laughs>
Yeah, Zonia's is the most likely next item, no, no lie. Why Rise is, is always the... Why is Rise a tank? Why is mana converted into ability power? Why has every iteration of Rise got some kind of crazy funky mechanic where he can just build tank and get away with it? Would you it's say crazy. he's like the, the AP version of uh, Ezreal that always breaks builds? Yeah, and choices oh, and without a doubt. Without a doubt. Both machine guns with spells, believe it or not. Turns out, low cooldowns. High damage, even with tank builds. Who'd have thought? That's like the question though, what are we playing for now? If this is going to be a game where the uh, soul point is still a world away, that's up in a minute for the next one for them to discuss as to what they do with it. Whether or not we would just get a gentleman's agreement to say, well, you can go for that. We want to trade and go for the Baron and Sick, because you already mentioned, I mean, there's a lot of damage on both teams to try and take this one down. Yeah, it only has a hit. I'm just wondering if he was trying to bait the side of Mammoth by like showing animations, but either way, Liv gets here into the mix, Bloodthirst completed. He could tank this Baron forever. You saw it on the Scuttle Crab as the Observer's highlight. So you're now playing Lights Goalkeeper! On. Oh, May Fun. He did not expect that level of damage, and now Rocco's also caught in trouble too. That's going to be two. The Baron is still there. Now, that's not being Leash. That is being guaranteed. Yeah, that will be confirmed. Fido actually does hit the third reset of the ultimate down to voice, but chooses not to go in rightly, so the team will just pick up Baron. Mayfun, ult, ghost, ready to go, was just CC locked into oblivion, has boots of lucidity, so those stuns are meaningful. You can see that they last long enough for him to have no shot to survive that one. And now Kanga well and truly in the driver's seat. The game has been in their hands, but Mammoth have been doing surprisingly well responding to the plays, right? It has just been reactive. But now they've got that Baron buff, you'll see what happens here again. It's a Q stun into an ultimate with the E there. Done, right? Like, just wrap it up. Rocco splits away from Voice. Tries to trade back, but just not enough yet from Voice's end. Really enjoying, though, this interaction between Lionel and Only, both playing these hard engaged champions. Just overlapping one after each other with the CC to guarantee that that target will be taken down. Worked wonders in finding that crucial target. Remove the jungler, no smite, no steal, and no chance to claw back at this gold deficit, which as you saw oh. was 8k. I'm not seeing any heal cut from the side of Mammoth either, Skimmy. Which quite crucially uh, does need to exist. Maybe I'm going crazy, actually there is an Oblivion Orb now for the Karma. And a Putrefier does make a lot of sense, but you've got Shield Blow Bloodthirster for top lane. Right, you've got a Volibear in general, and Zeri's now completed the Bloodthirster of her own. So there's going to be a lot of healing there. I definitely want to have the Putrefier as fast as possible. I always thought it was a Purifier when I re read, it, read it originally. It makes sense in your head, right? No, but it doesn't, right? Because it well, applies you're, you're Grievous Moon. Oh, true. Because it's not, yeah, it's not cleansing it, it's applying it. I always thought yeah, it was a terrible there. name, and then I realized it was Putrefier. apply a little bit of stank to your allies abilities <laughs> and attack. I was trying to think of something witty but I, I just I had nothing <laughs> here we go though may fun look to try and catch out that incredibly Fred Graves they actually uh, well he has to respond with ultimate and a flash I am getting a bit of deja vu back to the last game we saw where full-on collapse happened to a single laner yeah, starting to near the realm of unwinnable, to be frank, uh, for the side of Mammoth. The game revolves around the Caitlyn, and only the Caitlyn. Mammoth do like this type of playstyle. Voice has always been the carry for the team, but this might just be a little bit too much, right? With, with how strong the Graves is, and with the pressure they have in a 1-3-1. Top and hits up gone mid, soon to fall on down. And the third one is being battered by these cannon minions. You gotta fight sooner or later. You have to pick your moment. It's just so hard to find that when you're only engaged. It's a Hecarim. Solid flare onto Voice, forced to flash away, receives a shield from Karma. In jumps Liv, he goes gone for a second. He's just gonna come into a lot of CC, and it is Voice that picks up that kill. Ooh. Now the Realm Warp is on. Nowhere is safe. Lima's instant lightning crash reaction. 
Just engage away. Yeah, we'll just push them back, and that's still a win for the side of Kanga. You trade your top laner for two inhibitors any day of the week. Now you just have to really post up towards bot side. Drake in two minutes. Vision control to set up at the blue side quadrant of Mammoth's base for the next minute. It should just be a free objective. Supers are going to start pushing in with perfect timing. What do you do if you're Mammoth, right? Like, you just have to continue to play around voice, but he's now flashless. If he leaves the base, there's no safe space. Would you believe it? The first turret of this game, 29 minutes has now finally been achieved here by Mammoth. One that they so desperately needed to give them some way to find some angles. It's been tough for them. They have been reactive, as you said, but it has worked in that regard. They've managed to keep things close, at least in one area. But you've got to compound that argument once again, right? You are down so much gold. It is the Caitlyn show. The Caitlyn has no flash. The Gale Force is obviously nice in principle, but the cleanse, as we've seen already, evidence in this game, you can cleanse one thing, but it's just too much CC. Yeah, they're just layering that crowd control wildly. And you are still a Caitlyn, right? You're not an Ezreal that can self be self-sufficient. There's so much reliance on the Karma protecting you, but the way that Vex exists, right, gets into the fight with so much AoE spread. Gotta be perfect from not just you, but from your team. No Putrefire just yet. But there is a Drake. Drake in 20. Baron in 40. Less than three minutes, and those inhibs come up again. I mean, pushing them away here means that Drake's secured would live. Lived, keeping it interested right now. Oh, disengage away. Leonel hits the solid player, no stun, but just a slow shadow oh, touch. Vex. Connects onto Voice! He's been assassinated! Oh, the Realm Wolf just a fraction too late. Out of all the targets for that ultimate to connect with, it could have been anyone, just not Voice. He's hit it again, and you can flash away underneath your turret, but the damage is supreme. The tank rise has finally, finally fallen on down, and if you think he's going to stop there, you will be sorely mistaken. Into the fountain he goes. <laughs> finally, Kanga at 31 minutes can put a bow on it, then get their win, get their revenge, and now it's a one-to-one -one in their head-to-head. -head. Yeah, easy wrap-up in the end for the side of Kanga. Mammoth. They found a win condition, they found some kills, they got some things done in this game, but when all's said and done, they just never had enough money to ever contest the side of Kanga, who draft a composition that they're comfortable with. They play the composition that they're comfortable with perfectly, and you see a Graves, you pick the Nar into it. It was to the point where I could predict the Nar. It's not going to win you that 1v1 top lane, and so having the counter there feels a little bit fruitless in the end. And they just couldn't keep up with the pace of Kanga once they got ahead. Yeah, mid jungle in the very early moments, uh, clearly finding their lead. We saw it from the kills, we saw it from the Seers, we saw it from the map movements, which uh, will answer back at stage of their Mac, but ultimately it was all about that Caitlyn, and the Caitlyn kept going tumbling down. Yeah, look, you guys called it. You said Caitlyn was a little bit of an iffy pick going into you know the whole composition that Kanga managed to bring to the field. But, oh, it was like the curse you know there's not often that we actually see one of these first bloods in the coach's interview but from there it just seemed like it was just straight downhill you know nothing going right there for mammoth there, there was like a few moments but look we're 10 minutes dp you having a look at the replay and there's already like that six kill lead almost a four 5k gold lead and there was a few moments where we did see look at least the bot lane hit back but it was not enough by any means to get mammoth back into the game so Yes, there were a few hiccups, uh, mostly, you know, but, hey, was it only or was it Pabu that really screwed that flash up last year and it was funny? Do you remember that? No, only did that as well, I'm pretty sure. That was only. Okay, so look, <laughs> yeah, it was the we've same caught spot. <laughs> a couple of his blunders. And, and yeah, same spot, but on the other side. Yes. Of the, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, oh, no, uh, you've done him dirty. Oh, I've done him dirty. <laughs> but I, I, it happened and I was like, hang on. Was that him <laughs> that did it before too? So, look, unfortunate for only, but he got the W and he did a whole lot. He had, he had look, great movement across the map and uh, he might have even had that perfect game. Did he even fall before the end there, Rusty? I don't know if he did. I don't think anything could ever take him down in this game. So, yeah. 
No, it wasn't. It was a good showing from only, I think, strategically right from level one. We said it during the game, Mac, but you could call it a jungle gap. I feel like the team of Kanga, the gap yeah. of the jungle of Mammoth, though, is the biggest difference. And, and for me, that's a huge positive for Kanga. If, if they are strategically keeping this Hecarim down, they're playing towards their jungler. We know the medal of the man that is only. We know that he can make very good things happen on the map. So, yeah, they get it done. Man was insane. And look, that's it. You have a look at the gold difference. The graph, slightly different to the last couple of games. It's not just, you know, straight across and then there's a point where it just sort of flops one direction. It was just a slow, steady lead. You can see exactly when, you know, there were moments of gold swings coming through and potential for Mammoth to make their way back in. But then around the 30-minute mark again, it just got too much and it crumbled away to that uh, 12k gold lead that you see. Now, uh, looking at the damage, I'm thinking, okay, we see a lot coming out from Kanga here. We were talking about, I heard you guys talking about Graves, like all game, but we still have Vex doing more damage than the Graves. So, yeah, he had a lot of, I guess he had a lot of importance to the game, right? Because he went for the hull breaker, he had to play solo a lot of the time and still managed to get away scot free for most of those moments when the ganks didn't quite work for Mammoth, right? Yeah, I mean, speaking frankly, the, the Graves, we spoke about it a lot for good reason, Mac, and yeah. the biggest reason for that is that Mammoth, and it's actually like, let's go before the Graves. We said it during the predictions. We said that we wanted to see Mammoth have a really solid draft. If they draft with an error, then they yeah. have a higher variance for losing. That's why we speak about the Graves so much. If your opponents can blind pick this Graves top lane and, and just win its matchup, then something's gone a little bit amiss there, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, I guess so. And look, someone that pointed out that there was four support bands uh, and was angry about it, this kitty. So let's bring her back in to get her thoughts on that situation. Well, there was actually four support bands coming out of Mammoth and one coming out of Kanga. So technically, there was five support bands. But I think the That's... person who didn't plan to ban out the five supports was only. So let's bring him in for the interview. Hello Only, congrats on grabbing your second win in a row. How has the addition of Fido benefited you being the jungler of Kinga? It's good. Comms are more chaotic. There's a lot more fiesta fighting and I think our early games have been uh, pretty solid recently. Also, I just want to say that I didn't actually fail my volley ult over the wall. That was, um, that was a visual <laughs> bug. So for anyone that saw that in the stream, that was, um, yeah, that was a bug that didn't actually happen. So yeah. Also, one thing I hate about Volibear is volumes? that it ruins my damage. It ruins my damage stats. Yeah, I want to be playing like it's Evelyn okay, and you know, Carthus and Champs to good stats. Mm. Yeah. It's okay. Your KP went up, so that's always a plus. But you guys handed a loss to Mammoth, meaning you guys are currently tied for 6th place. And 5th place is only one win ahead. Which, uh, which team is actually going to pose a challenge for that last playoff spot? Um, have you seen our win loss? Like, they're all they're all challenges right now. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what do you want me to say? I hope we verse peace though. We seem to have like good history versus them. So, if I wanted to like beat any team to get into playoffs, probably peace. I mean, Lisa did say that Peace's Kryptonite was Kanga and you're probably going to be their uh, nightmare forever. But I need to know something Facts. because I have interviewed Lived and he said that if you guys grab a win tonight that you guys will be watching Season 1 to Season 4 of Attack on Titan. So did that ever happen? Yes? No? Wait, no, probably not. I mean, I'd watch one episode with them. I wouldn't do a four season binge. I'm, I'm a fan of other animes. I like... Death Parade and Evangelion and stuff like that. So I'll do like one episode of uh, AOT, but I'm not going to binge for a season. Sorry. Sorry, Tristan. Sorry to my teammate. I actually just cut, like, I really hurt his well, feelings just now by saying that, by the way. It's okay, because my feelings were hurt. You got some classic animes on your um, favorite list. Well, congrats on the win again. Hopefully you guys have a fun time celebrating and have a great night. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Kitty. So the visual bug, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I have a lot of those in my games too. I don't yeah. know, they just seem to pop up all the time. <laughs> huh? Isn't that, isn't that something? Now, uh, look, that was huge. That was a big W for only. Even though, look, his damage stats are ruined. It's not about your stats. Don't play for stats, play for the dub. And that's what he did. So big team player only doing his role and getting that W on the board for Kanga because they need a few more if they want to try to get into that fifth position. But look, we do have another Dare MVP 
for this game. Ooh, I think you all know who it is. Let's just throw it up. It is the big man up in top lane. It's Liv, the Dare Ice Coffee. Most valuable player, 5-2-5, and five, and just shredding it up on the graves. Speaking of playing roles, this man was out on an island for a lot of this game, but he made it work, Rusty. It's pretty easy to play your role if you're the rest of his team, right? When he's bringing yeah. four people up to deal with him. I uh, definitely did his part for the success of Kanga. I do, Loki, give it a little bit of credit to, to only for being able to control the team, and maybe it is chaotic energy that Mid provides here from Fido, but at the end of the day, it seems like Only's thriving in the chaos, and Liv is starting to really find himself again in that exact same situation. Beautiful. That's what we expected coming into this split, and look, sometimes it seemed like that didn't work, but something that does work is fourth game in a full game day. You know, to get there, we've got to go to a break. And that's going to happen right now. Why? Because I like games. I like a fourth game. And it's going to be Order and Die Wolves, which we're all bloody waiting for. So we'll see you on the other side of this.